Hello my beautiful girls, I am so excited for this video, more excited than I have been in so long. We are talking about how to balance your light and your dark feminine energy today. I filmed two different videos talking about these energies. You guys have been messaging me nonstop asking, how do you balance both? How do you connect to the energy that you don't have? So I am here to guide you on how to do that today. You can tell it's gonna be a good video when my hand is literally blue. I could not stop taking notes on everything to share with you guys. So let's go ahead and get right into the video. So light and dark feminine energy, if you aren't familiar with what they are, I will give you a brief summary, but I recommend watching my previous videos. They're gonna be in the link in the description below. You have both energies in your body. You can access your light. You can also access your dark feminine energy. Even if you feel like you've never been able to, or that you physically cannot, I'm here to tell you that you can, and I'm going to teach you exactly how. So, I'm going to discuss first off what, nat what natural energy you have more of, because most people are either in their light or their dark. So we're going to talk about how to figure out which one you have, and then I'm going to teach you how to balance both, and how to access the energy that you're not that experienced with yet. So guys, if you're watching live, welcome. I'm so happy that you're here. All of your questions, I'm going to take those at the end. Also, happy first day of November. It is my birthday month, so I'm so, so excited. Let's go ahead and get into the video. So number one, which energy do you have more of, light or dark feminine energy? So let's start with the light feminine energy. The light feminine energy is the really warm, loving, angelic, soft, open, natural beauty energy that you have. So think of, um, think of Gigi Hadid, think of Daphne from Bridgerton, Audrey Hepburn. These women all have very strong light feminine energy. Addison Rae, another great example. Dark feminine energy. This is your seductive, your passionate, your strong, fierce, powerful energy. This is someone like Angelina Jolie, Lori Harvey, Rihanna. So the difference in these two types of energies is the women who have their light feminine energy, they radiate very, very good feelings. You will notice that the women with dark feminine energy, they radiate self-respect and they're almost intimidating to other people. With the dark feminine energy, you also notice that men can't really control themselves around the women with dark feminine energy versus the women with light feminine energy Men just want to love and protect this woman. Treat her like, like, a, like their princess or their goddess or their queen. So your natural feminine energy that you have has been shaped by your life experience. The woman that you are right now, it can be changed. Your identity can be changed. For me, I have a very, very strong, natural, light feminine energy. And I'm going to explain exactly why this is so that you can kind of relate and see for yourself. So growing up, I never knew how to connect to my dark feminine energy. My dark feminine energy has been buried in my body the first 21 years of my life. It was not until after this that I knew how to tap into this side of myself. And it is because as a girl, I was praised for being a good girl. I was praised for my good behavior. Here's a few examples. When I was younger, I'm the oldest of four siblings. When my siblings and I would go out with my mom, every time a stranger would compliment us on our good behavior, my mom would give us a little plastic token. And once we had 10 tokens, we could trade that in with her for an hour of doing whatever we wanted. Whether it was going to Dairy Queen or going for a drive to the Las Vegas Strip, we could trade that in and it gave us a reward in our body, in our mind, that good behavior is a reward. And this is what I want to strive for. Nothing against my mom. I love her to death. But this taught me that being a good girl is going to get me far and keep me safe in life. However, this dimmed down my dark feminine energy. I was scared to tap into it. Here's another example. When I was in fifth grade, I kissed a boy. And I was severely severely shamed for doing this. I was punished, not by my mom, but I was punished because I kissed a boy. This shame got stuck and locked in my body and stored as trauma. So for me, being intimate with men 
giving them affection, romance, tapping into my sensuality, that triggered me. And I felt that I would be abandoned again. I felt like I would be punished and severely, severely shamed if I were to access my sensuality. So for me, my dark feminine energy has been buried in my body for so long. And because of the work that I've done and the research and learning how to tap into this, I know how I now know how to balance both my light and my dark feminine energy. So this is why I know that it's possible for you. So I learned that being well behaved, appeasing other people, being the nice girl, this became my comfort zone. Because without it I would be abandoned and I would no longer be able to survive. That is what I thought. So these beliefs get carried into my adulthood now. For you, what is your comfort zone? What are you comfortable doing because of the way that you've been programmed and raised? This directly connects to the type of energy that is more comfortable for you now. So for the woman who was abused as a kid maybe, maybe she was abused by a family member and now she has become closed off to people and she maybe has become hypersensual because she experienced such abuse and trauma at such a young age. So for her, she's locked in her dark feminine energy. She does not know how to be warm, loving. It's not safe for her to be in her light feminine energy because of the trauma that she's gone through in her childhood. This is just an example, but for you, if you sit and think, what way was I programmed? What is now my comfort zone? Because that has a direct connection to the type of energy <clears throat> that you now have. So changing to a different type of energy. How do you do it? How do you actually access it? Because it's scary, it's hard, it's very unnatural. But I'm telling you it can be done because I've done it. I love, love my dark feminine energy now. It, it just makes me feel so powerful and before I felt like I was living 50% of myself. Now I'm 100% myself. I know how to access all of the parts of me because I've done the work to learn how to connect to my dark feminine energy. So you will notice Moving on to how to connect with your opposite energy and balance both. Women who are naturally in their light feminine energies, you will notice that when they are a teenager, when they are um, mostly a girl in college, they will have a rebellious phase. They will um, have that phase where they kind of break free because they've been restricted. That dark feminine energy within them is just waiting to explode. For the girl who is naturally in her dark feminine energy growing up, you will notice that she is very attracted to kind-hearted, super nice, um, the really, really sweet guys. It is because she's trying to access this part of herself. Excuse me. If you sit and think, what type of partner do I want? Is it the bad boy? Is it the good boy who's really, really nice, lets me do whatever I want? That is you trying to break free and connect to a certain type of your feminine energy. So for me, thankfully, I never really had a rebellious phase. I mean, in college I did a little bit, but this is when I started researching feminine energy, doing my inner work. So I was able to skip over that and just immediately absorb this knowledge of, oh, this is how I connect to my dark feminine energy. I don't need to go out and have that hoe phase or do any rebellious things. I know the work that it takes, which is what I'm sharing with you now. There are four steps to connect with your opposite energy. Number one is knowing when to use each. So for the girls who have been asking, how do I balance them? Also, the girls asking me which energy is better to be in. Both. The answer is both. If you only have one type of energy, it's so you know when you have a partner or a friend, they only show you one version of themselves. Maybe they are just super mean, or maybe they're only funny, or maybe they're only nice. You lose attraction to them because they're so one-dimensional. Someone who is multi-dimensional has different flavors to themselves. This is very, very attractive. It's what I'm teaching you to do. Knowing when to use each energy is step number one. There's four steps total. So your light feminine energy, you can think of it as, think of it as, let's say the base of a salad. I was gonna say the leaves, <laughs> the lettuce, the spinach, the kale. Light feminine energy, the base that holds the salad. You want to be in your light feminine energy majority of the time with your family, with your friends, with your partner, in your career, your school. Show up in your light feminine energy, your dark feminine energy, toppings on the salad that are sprinkled on top. You use your dark feminine energy in specific situations, and I will give you a few examples. Number one, when you're being disrespected or treated poorly by someone else. 
access your dark feminine energy. What this looks like is speaking up for yourself, setting a boundary, walking away, being cold, being harsh. Another example is when you are intimate, when you are exploring your sensuality, when you're with your partner doing these romantic things, this is when you want to lean into the dark feminine energy. Because the dark feminine energy, if you see my other video, you will know that pleasure and desire is a core fundamental of dark feminine energy. This is when you want to tap into it. When you are in a dangerous area or you are needing to protect yourself, you're going to be in your dark feminine energy. If I'm walking down a dark alley, I'm not going to be walking around, oh, life is a fairy tale, like I love everyone, I'm so open. No, I am my eyes are dark, my, I don't have a smile, I'm very serious. It shows up in my body language because I shift into my dark feminine energy to protect myself. So knowing when to use each energy is extremely, extremely important. That's why I put it as step number one. Let's say that you are going to dinner with your man's, with your man's parents. Which type of energy do you think you want to be in? Your dark, your dark, no, your light feminine energy. Oh my gosh. <laughs> no, you want to be in your light feminine energy. You don't want to be super sensual. You don't want to be super cold and harsh and closed off around your man's parents. You want to be open and warm and loving. However, when you go home after a date night with your man and it's just the two of you, which energy do you think you are going to want to shift into? Your dark feminine energy. So see how you can start to realize when it's appropriate to shift into your dark versus your light feminine energy. Step number two, decide that you get to now have both energies. Everything in your life is shaped by your beliefs and your mind. Your personality is not set in stone. If you take away one thing from this video, please let it be this. Your personality is not set in stone. You can become any version of yourself at any time. Is someone in your head forcing you to remain the same? Is someone saying, Alexis, you do not get to be in your light feminine energy. You do not get to be warm and loving. You only get to be in your dark feminine energy because of the way that you were raised, because of this, because of that. No, no one is forcing you. You are choosing to be in a specific energy. Another part of this is there are multiple different versions of you that exist. You are choosing the version of you that is showing up right now. The version, the version that's here watching this video, you decided to bring her here. You get to decide, do I want to access my dark or do I want to access my light feminine energy? Do I want to be able to access both? You decide, that's step number two. Step number three, this is probably the most, probably my favorite concept that I've ever come up with to teach people. You are an actor in a movie, you are writing the script. So what this means, life is a movie. You get to practice every single day as if you are on set rehearsing. Life is not just one reality. It is a movie that you are creating. You are the director, you are the producer, and you are the actor. Use your life as a moment to practice and become any actor that you want. The actors on the TV, do you think that that is actually how they are? Let's use Chuck Bass for example. Is he that playboy that, is he actually Chuck Bass in real life? No, he decided this is the type of version that I need to show up as right now, so I'm going to bring this character to life. You do that for your dark or your light feminine energy. So, your script that you have, rewrite it. You are no longer only one dimensional. So let's say that someone disrespects you. Tell yourself, time to rewrite my script and practice being in my dark feminine energy. Let me set a boundary, let me speak my mind. Let's say that you're getting groceries. Time for me to practice using my light feminine energy. Let me just act. I'm only an actor in a movie. Smile, interact with people, ask for their opinions on different fruits or vegetables. Have that open, loving, warmth energy in the grocery store. You practice it. So an example for you is I used to be a hostess on the strip in Las Vegas at a restaurant. I hated that job. I could not stand it. But guess what? I thought, you know what, I'm, I know that this is temporary and I'm going to use this to practice my dark feminine energy because I know that it's a little bit weaker than my light feminine energy. Because of this job, I swear I'm way more balanced in my energies now because this is what would happen. My third night of working at this hostess job, this guy comes up to me, goes like this. And if I decided, you know what, I'm, I'm not going to use this as an opportunity to learn. I'm not going to practice. My response would have been, 
oh, haha, like, <laughs> no, like, that's funny. Trying to people please and appease him. You know what I did instead? I said, Alexis, wake up. You get to practice your dark feminine energy. So you know what I said? I looked him in the eye, stood up straight and said, I don't spin for people. And I held eye contact until he walked away. Do you think I was comfortable saying that? No, I was not comfortable. I'm naturally a woman with very strong white feminine energy. But I realized you don't change by being comfortable. So I decided to tap into my dark feminine energy, speak up for myself, let this disgusting idea of spinning for this man, let the door be slammed to that. No, I'm not going to do that. And guess what? That became the moment where everything became easier to start setting boundaries and speaking up for myself. This will happen for you. Once you do it once, it becomes easier to do it over and over. You start changing the woman that you are. So my recommendation for you is do this at school with your career when you're running errands. But remember this key rule. I always tell the girls that I work with, start implementing this with strangers first and then move to your inner circle. The reason is because it's hard to change your identity with people that know you so well because you're going to be scared of what they think. Which moves into my next point. What if people judge me for trying to show up as a different version of myself? That might be something that you're thinking. Well, every time you stop yourself from trying something new and being your authentic self, you're giving that person your leash and saying, decide where I'm going to go today. That is what you're doing. So if you think that the people laying on their deathbeds that their number one regret in life is valuing the opinions of other people so much and you are still continuing to do that, ask yourself why. The more that you try new personalities, the more that you show up as your authentic self, it becomes easier and easier to do it. You are either letting someone hold your leash and decide where you're going to go on a walk that day or you are taking the leash and saying, no, this is where I'm going to go. It starts with standing up for yourself, trying new personalities, trying new identities, and really exploring your different sides. So start experimenting with the type of woman that you want to be, and naturally you will become her. The more that you do something, it becomes easier and easier. People feel your energy. If you approve of yourself, they approve of you. That is step number three. Last but not least, and then I'll take some questions. Your style is how you can learn to connect to a new type of energy. There's a reason why I saved this for last, because there's the inner work, which are points number one, two, and three, and then there's more of the outer, the surface level of your light and dark feminine energy, which is your style. So there's two parts to this. Your style that you can change and your style that you can't. And before I say this, I want to let you know why your style is so important. Think of a bride on her wedding day her gorgeous white dress. She is in her light feminine energy. Notice how she's angelic, how she's beautiful, she's beaming, she's happy. Brides are a perfect example of a woman in their light feminine energy. The way that you dress affects the way that you feel. Do you see any brides in their dark feminine energy? Maybe the night of their wedding, <laughs> or maybe their honeymoon, but no, they are wearing this gorgeous white gown, so as a result, they feel angelic. They feel their light feminine energy come to life. This is why this point is so important for you. The way that you look determines how you feel, which determines how you act. So let's start with the part that you cannot change, which is your facial features. So there's two parts to this. Your facial features versus your um, dark and light features. So there's two main types of facial features. You either have a baby face or you have that fox eye face. The baby face is a softer look, so the bigger eyes, almost like Disney princess vibes, versus the, the sharp um, fox eye face, which is like Bella Hadid, super um, squinted eyes, pointed eyebrows, sharp jawline, cheekbones. That's the fox eye look. You can't really change that about yourself unless you get plastic surgery. Let's talk about your dark and light features. So Middle Eastern women, black women, Hispanic women have naturally dark features. I have naturally dark features. European women, white American women usually have light features. There's not one that's better than the other. However, you have to realize 
that you cannot change these, fe these features. Accept it, embrace it, and use it to the best of your ability. Here's how I do it. I know that I have dark features. My hair, my dark eyes. When I play with my hair, when I use my eyes a certain way, I can feel my dark feminine energy come alive because I know that this is natural dark feminine energy. However, I have a baby face. I know that I have bigger eyes, I have softer facial features, so I use this in a way to feel my light feminine energy. If you feel like a Disney princess, then you can naturally tap into your light feminine energy. If you feel like Bella Hadid, like a sexy supermodel, you naturally can tap into your dark feminine energy. So use what you cannot control to start to control a new outcome. Let's talk about what you can control, which is your style. So your clothes, your makeup, your perfume, your nails. So the, I had this theory with clothing, and let me know what you guys think about it, but I believe that the type of natural energy that you have, when you wear clothing that is opposite to that, it takes you to a new level. And here's what I mean. A woman with dark feminine energy, let's use Lori Harvey as an example. When she wears a sundress, it Oh my gosh, it's just a different level. It's so powerful because she has the natural dark feminine energy, but she also is wearing something that brings out her light feminine energy. You know why this is so powerful? It's because she's balanced. She is so balanced in both energies when she has this kind of style. Let's take Gigi Hadid for example. Let's put her in an all leather sexy outfit, bodysuit. This is a whole new level of seductiveness, of feminine energy, because she's a light feminine energy woman wearing dark feminine energy clothes. It's different than a dark feminine energy woman wearing dark feminine energy clothes. There's just a difference. This is my theory, but let me know what you guys think. So find clothes that reflect the type of energy you want for yourself. So for me, I love my light feminine energy and I love my dark feminine energy. So my closet is a range of these types of clothing. So for example, I'm wearing a corset uh, type top. This, I would say, it is a mix of both light and dark feminine energy. But I will show you my skirt real quick. My skirt is darker feminine energy. And it's because it is shorter, it's tighter, and it goes really well with this top. So I feel that I can embrace both my light and my dark feminine energy because of this type of outfit. Moving on to your makeup. So your makeup, if you want that dark feminine energy in yourself, start doing darker makeup. Smoky eyes, sharp eyebrows, lifted eyes, heavy dark cheekbones. This is all dark feminine energy style. Your light feminine energy. This would be more of the bronzy, the pink, sun-kissed, natural makeup look. And I think both are so, so beautiful. Right now my makeup, it is more light feminine energy makeup. But if you go and watch my dark feminine energy video, it is dark feminine energy makeup. My eyes are really dark. I really loved playing with my eyeshadow that day. So another part is your perfume. This is one of my favorite things I'm going to share with you guys too. Your perfume is so powerful. The scents that you have makes you, oh, it just makes you so irresistible as a woman. So there's two different types of perfume that I'm going to share with you as an example. Carolina Herrera, the stiletto heel perfume. Oh, it smells so good. That is a dark feminine energy perfume. It smells like, <laughs> it smells like desire. That's the only way that I can put it versus Burberry Her, one of my all-time favorite, favorite perfumes. It is a light feminine energy perfume. It smells like flowers, it smells like heaven. Oh, both are so good. But start experimenting with scents that help bring out the energy that you want in yourself. Another part is your nails. Red nails, that can really access that sensual, dark feminine energy side of yourself versus white or nude nails, more of the light feminine energy. So. As I mentioned earlier, the way that you look determines how you feel, which determines how you act. So you can start playing around and experimenting with your style. I'll give a quick recap on the four steps and then I will take some of your guys' questions. So number one was know when to use each energy. Number two was 
decide that you now get to have both light and dark feminine energy. Number three, start living as if you were an actor in a movie. And number four is start experimenting with your style. I have loved, loved sharing these tips with you guys. Please let me know what you think and what you would like to see more of. Now I'm going to take some of your guys' questions and chat with you for a bit. Your energy is beautiful. Love your content, girl. Thank you, Liz. Thank you. <laughs> How do you handle disagreements with your partner? Great question, Jazz. So this is such a, an, a deep question. Um, handling disagreements with your partner, decide if you're a person that wants to handle res a conflict immediately or if you need some space and talk about that with your partner. Let them know what your action plan is going to be when conflicts come up. Try to put yourself in your partner's shoes to see how they are feeling and speak from your body. That's the feminine energy. Rather than accusing your partner or um, losing your emotions, speak from your body. Say, you know, I'm feeling so rejected right now or I'm feeling so disappointed that this happened and allow your man to be the one to come up with the solution. That masculine energy loves solving problems. You do not have to be the one to come up with a solution. You guys can do it together and you can inspire him to want to do that. Love you so much, you're so beautiful. Oh, Gio, <laughs> this is one of my friends. Gio, hey, we, oh my gosh, him and I went to elementary school together, middle school together. <laughs> Where is your top from? This is from Revolve. I have the link in um, the description of all of my outfits from Revolve if you want to go and find them. How do you overcome the idea of seeing light feminine energy as being weak? Ooh, Talula, great question, girl. Also, everyone's sending the likes. Thank you so much, guys. Thank you for the gifts, the flowers. It is so, so sweet. Thank you. So how do you overcome seeing light feminine energy as weak? Know that it is a different source of power than what you might think power looks like. So you hear a lot of um, couples say that the man might wear the pants in the relationship, but it's really the woman that is leading. And it is because she's using her feminine energy to kind of create the outcome that she wants, to create that love and that passion and really get what it is that she desires, but she's doing it in a feminine way. So power and strength try to change your perspective of what that has looked like for you because weakness your idea of weakness could be a limiting belief what do you think of weakness what do you think it looks like so try to see that you can still be strong you can still be confident set your boundaries speak your mind you do not have to dim down yourself if you are showing up as your authentic confident self that is strong that is your strength coming alive so try to figure out what does strength and weakness look like for you and how can you use your feminine energy to achieve that strength. Um, are you going live every day? I remember you were every Friday, kind of every Friday. Yeah, Miranda. <laughs> Sorry, girls. Sometimes I go out of town, so I don't want to commit that I'm always going to be here at a specific time. But generally, I like to live stream Tuesdays and Fridays, 2.30 p.m. Pacific Coast time. Do you practice talking in the mirror to feel more confident? I see you smile a lot when you talk. Yeah, oh my gosh, everybody says this. I think it's because when I'm talking with you guys, I'm so excited and passionate to be here. I just cannot wait to share all of these tips. So I'm really happy talking with you guys, but I don't look in the mirror and talk. I used to take a lot of interview coaching because I was formerly Miss Nevada Teen USA. I had to learn how to speak very well. Practice, practice, practice. I put myself in situations where I was on stage speaking in front of thousands of people and it taught me to overcome the fear of speaking and to really be confident with what I am saying. One tip is um, to go with whatever you're saying. If you respond to something and all of a sudden you think, oh, that's not what I wanted to say, go with it and just practice being the most confident that you can be. Let's see what you guys are saying. Can you save this and post it somewhere? Yeah, Tallulah, it's going to be on my YouTube channel. Same name as my TikTok name. You are the mother of our generation, I swear. <laughs> I love you guys, I love you so much. <laughs> Let's see. Hi Alexis, hi! 
Thank you for sharing. Yes, you're welcome. Let's go have dinner. I'm not available for dinner right now. Let's see. POV, you're a queen. <laughs> Anna, thank you, girl. <laughs> also, guys, if you want to work with me one on one and do private feminine energy coaching, I'd love to work with you. Go to feminineguru.com. What's my favorite perfume? Ooh, good question. So I just looked right at it because I already know which one I'm going to say. It's Gucci Bloom. It's the yellow bottle. This is the best perfume I've ever smelled. I've tried to get into new perfumes after this one and I just can't. I always go back to it. I feel like it is my signature scent. It smells like flowers and luxury. That's the way that I can describe it. Oh, I just love, love, love it. Hmm. So, Nahida, the question that you're asking me, any tips on how to win your husband back after he cheated and you both decide to stay? So, girl, this is a question more for coaching, where we will have to talk one-on-one. -on -one. Should you handle triggering behaviors from partners with light or dark feminine energy? Good, good question. So, how do I answer this? So, I would say you have to feel in your body what's right. Your body always knows the answer. Your dark feminine energy, you have to be careful using it because you don't want to attack. You don't want to be cold and harsh when the solution could be resolved a much simpler and peaceful way. If you feel that your partner's attack on you was genuinely malicious, that is where you use your dark feminine energy. If it was accidental or coming from a place of love, if you recognize it is your own trigger, that is more of when you want to use your light feminine energy. So, oh, guys, I did not see the time. I have a client that I'm working with in a few minutes. So I'm going to take two more questions and then hop off. Any tips to stay fit? Yeah, so I actually am posting a YouTube video on what I eat in a day, the vitamins, juices, and meals that I take. I highly recommend watching that video. Also, tracking your progress and deciding what do I want to feel like and then working towards that. So whether you want to feel energized during the day, whether you want to feel toned, if you want to feel happy, feel those endorphins released, commit to a routine that will get you there. Hi. Oh, oh my gosh. I just did my first session today and she's amazing, worth every penny. Tala, I didn't realize that this is you in the comments, girl. Oh, I loved, loved working with you today too. <laughs> How do, you, how do you control anger? Guys, this will be the last question, then I've got to run. How do you control anger and stay within that feminine energy? So, oh, there's so many good questions, guys. I hate leaving. How do you control anger? So for me, I need actual practices to help control anger. And for me, this looks like breathing. I will breathe really deeply, hold it, and then breathe out when I'm angry. I will remove myself from a situation so that I do not say anything that I regret. And I go and do something that feels good for my body. Is it dancing? Is it having a juice? I love kombucha. It's so good for your gut and really, really boosts my mood. I do something that feels good for me so that I can take my mind and my energy off of whatever made me angry. Connect back to myself, to my feminine energy. And then make a decision from a place of more peace and warmth. However, I do not want you to think that you cannot be angry. You, abso you absolutely can be angry. However, Take that energy and channel it into something else. Go and throw a plate. Go and um, scream in your car. Use that anger and let it out. Do not keep it stuck inside your body. Part of the feminine energy is the wild woman, the wild woman archetype. This will have to be a whole different video. Releasing your emotion, being free, being wild. It is, it is okay for you to do this. The feminine woman is not just restricted in only one dimension, as we talked about earlier. So... Guys, I am going to head off now. I have loved, loved talking with you guys today. I will be back Friday with a new video. Let me know what else you would like to see. And I hope that you have a great rest of your day. And I hope that you're practicing balancing your light and your dark feminine energy. All right, guys. I'll see you soon. Bye.